Hey guys, so I've got a pretty, I've got a pretty big haul for you. I've got a pretty big haul. It's pretty big. Hey guys, so I have a pretty big haul for you today. I actually filmed a haul video maybe like last week or a week and a half ago, and I just didn't have time to post it. And now it feels like I've accumulated some more things. So I'm going to redo it. So now this is kind of like everything like everything that I've gotten in the past few weeks. Saks was having a gift card event and then Neiman Marcus was taking $50 off a $200 purchase, $100 off $400 purchase. So I took advantage of those things. And I also have some PR stuff. So I will leave all the PR stuff for the very end. So if you are not into that, you can just click away. So let's go ahead and get right into the things that I have purchased. Oh, I also have a lot of makeup brushes. So, okay, so I'll go through like my makeup products, we'll do makeup brushes, and then I will do my PR stuff. How does that sound? Okay, so I'm gonna start with a perfume. So I just did a mini reviews video where I talked about some of the products that I mentioned in June 2018, and in there was the Guerlain Meteorites perfume. And I mentioned that it smells very, very similarly to the Meteorites um, powder, uh, that violet scent, but there's also like a little bit of like fruitiness in there. So there's definitely violet, but then there's also other stuff in there as well. And I think I mentioned that I really wanted something that smelled just like the powders, which is really just violets basically. And Tara Babies, whom you guys know I love, she actually commented and said, get the Anique Goutal La Violette perfume. And I feel like I've heard her mention this perfume in her videos. And I think I went to look for it once and it wasn't anywhere. Anyway, long story short, it was at Neiman Marcus. And since they were having that $50 off 200, I purchased this along with some other things, which we'll get to. But Anique Goutal has actually rebranded to Goutal Paris. So they dropped her first name, I suppose. The first fragrance I was ever obsessed with was L'Adrian, I think is how you pronounce it. It's a very citrusy scent. And I started wearing that like my freshman year in college. I purchased, the bottles were really beautiful. They've changed everything. They've really rebranded and remarketed everything. But that was my very first like perfume crush. Absolutely loved it. And I don't know, just kind of got away from it over the years, but this really brought me back. So here is, here's the box that it came in. So this inside box kind of comes out of the sleeve. It's really pretty. And here is the bottle. So the bottle is uh, a little bit updated from their older bottles. Uh, it's a little bit less fluted. I feel like the older bottles were a little bit more ornate looking. So I feel like this is a really nice modern version of like what I'm used to seeing from them. And I think all of this happened a long time ago. It's not like they just made these changes, but this scent she was to Tar Babies was totally right. It just smells just like the powder. It's so beautiful. And I'm not one for powdery scents. I just, I don't like like baby powder, like that scent I don't like, but there's something about the powdery scent of a violet that I, I just love. It's just, it's so, it's just so pretty. It's so romantic. It's so spring and I just love it. Pretty much I've been using this as room spray. I was a little bit worried how it was gonna smell on my skin because my, my skin tends to really kind of make scents a little bit more sour. So I sprayed this and it smelled a little bit different and I was a little bit worried. I thought, oh shoot, you know, I'm just gonna use this as room spray. But once it kind of aired out a little bit and once it really kind of reacted with the heat of my skin, it really just smelled like the violets. I was so happy. So I'm wearing it now and I just love it. I love it. So I'm so glad I picked this up and thank you to Tara Babies for reminding me about this scent. Why am I putting this back in the box? <laughs> so to get to the $200 mark after I purchased the um, Violette perfume, I decided to pick up the two new Clé de Peau cream color eye, no, cream eye color solos. So they came out with 308 and 309. This is part of their spring line. And I had talked about this, I think, in one of my Will I Buy It's, I think. And I knew I wanted to get like the darker brown one. Let me just open these up. So I have never ever used one of these uh, cream eye products from Clay de Peau, but I have one of their cream blushes that I have fallen completely in love with. So I thought I would give these a shot. And here is 309. Ooh, it has a like really pretty metallic sheen. Ooh, nice. So that is 309. It's a lot warmer than I thought it was gonna be. In the pictures online and any sort of like promo pics I saw, it just looked like a very kind of neutral brown. Uh, but it has a bit more warmth to it than I 
expected. So that's really pretty. And these come with a little brush, I guess. Let's see. These come with like the world's smallest double-ended brush. <laughs> one end is a sponge and one end is an actual synthetic brush. Isn't this just so cute? <laughs> So let's take a look at color number 308. And this one I was really on the fence about whether or not I wanted to get, but I thought this would actually just be a really good kind of neutral shade to like lay down if I needed to. So this is 308 and it's much more pearly than I thought. So I think this is also gonna be a lot prettier than I assumed. This is pretty, I love the texture of their cream products. So here is 308 and I don't know about you guys, but that looks like a highlighter to me. I am definitely gonna be trying that out on the cheeks, but isn't that pretty? And then I made like another trip to Neiman Marcus while they were having this $50 off of 200 and I actually purchased more clay to post stuff. So I think what I'm gonna do, and you guys let me know down below in the comments section if you're interested in this, I think what I'm gonna do is like a like Clay de Poe try on haul, uh, kind of featuring the new spring uh, 2019 stuff because I have these two cream shadows now. I have their new uh, luminizing face enhancer number 18. And then I have those um, refining lip luminizers, which have been, uh, you know, reformulated for this season. And then I also purchased, this is not new to the Clay de Poe line at all, neither of these things, but I got the correcting cream veil, which has an SPF 21. And this makes for a really, beautiful uh, primer. I got a sample of this, used it, really loved it, and then kind of forgot about it. And then a friend of mine that I was with, she actually reminded me um, about this product because she really, really loves it herself. And I was like, you know what? I am gonna try it. So here's what the packaging looks like. And again, it's called the Correcting Cream Veil with SPF 21. So let me swatch a little bit of this for you guys because there's a little bit, whoops, that's way too much. <laughs> um, but there's like a little bit of radiance to this product. That, I, I mean, I squirted out way too much, but do you see that radiance? Isn't that beautiful? And so my friend who has the full bottle, who's been using it, she says she loves to put just this on if she just needs like an SPF, but wants like a little something going on in her skin, but she doesn't want to go like full foundation. She'll use this because she thinks it really kind of perfects her skin and all of that. So I was completely convinced and I was like, this looks beautiful. So picked that up. And then while I was there, I decided to pick up one of their foundations. So you guys know how much I love the foundation, which I have on right now. And I just mentioned it in my favorites. And um, the cushion compact from Clay de Poe was a little bit of a, I don't want to say fail. I mean, the, the formula is actually really nice, but I got the wrong shade. And so, you know, when I was at the counter and just kind of talking to the sales associate, I got pretty excited about the Radiant Fluid Foundation and she matched me to O10. So I'm O20 in the foundation. I got O20 in the cushion and it was too dark. And so I told her, I was like, I was under the impression that I'm O20 in Clay de Poe. She was like, mm. she's like, no, you look like an O10 to me. And she was right. So. This is what the packaging looks like, and it has a pump at the top, and this is basically their lightest foundation. So this has like light coverage. It feels great on the skin. She gave me a sample of this. I kind of wore it on like half of my face for that day just to kind of, you know, test it out, see if it oxidized, see if it did anything weird, see if my skin reacted to it at all. My skin did not react to it. It did not oxidize and it just felt really weightless yet um, nourishing at the same time. And I was really excited by it. So I'm glad I picked up the full bottle. It's really quite nice. It really feels very, very silky on the skin. So I think I'll do that kind of Clay de Poe try on haul with you guys. Let me know down below if you would be interested in that or if that's the worst idea you've ever heard. Let me know. And then Saks was having a gift card event. So I took the moment to re-up on my La Mer Moisturizing Soft Lotion. This is the lotion that I use uh, every day, sometimes during the day, sometimes at night. I'll switch back and forth. Maybe I'll use it for both. But I ran out of this like about a month ago and I thought, well, let me just suck it up until there's an event like this one. And I'm so glad it came along because I was dying for this. I, I, I can't live without this. I can't live without this. So I'm glad I picked up another bottle and I've already been using this uh, ever since I got it. When did I go to SAC? Maybe last week or week and a half ago? So glad I got that. And then I also picked up this um, natural uh, precision lip definer from Chanel. So 
I don't have, currently, I don't have any Chanel lip liners in my collection. And one, I thought that was a little bit weird, but two, this was actually the very, very first lip liner I ever used. I got this in college at some time, and this is the same color that I had in college, which is natural number 34. So it was a little bit, I don't know, it was a little bit nostalgic, but I thought, you know, I have to pick this up. And I think the essay there was kind of making noises that they were... I don't know, maybe repackaging, reformulating, doing something to these lip liners. And I thought, I have to get this before it goes away because this old packaging, it hasn't changed since I purchased this, you know, 20, a long time ago. We won't go there. But it has a brush at one end and then here's the lip liner. So this lip liner is just such a great nude. It's a little bit pinky. It can go a little bit peach if you need it to. It's nude. It's... It's just great. It's just a great lip liner. And I really was like, why don't I have this? Or why haven't I picked up a Chanel lip liner in like 25 years or whatever? So I picked that up and I'm very happy to have it. And then I also ended up with this uh, Trish McAvoy Intense Gel Eyeliner in Arabian Nights. It's just this great, like metallic-y, dark navy blue. It's really beautiful. So this is a uh, one end of it, and then the other end of it is like a little smudger tip, which is really nice. Uh, but I was turned on to the Trish McAvoy 24 hour like shadow sticks. Those are great, I have it on right now. I mentioned those in my favorites yesterday. They're just wonderful. So I thought, let me give these eyeliners a shot. And I actually have not used these yet, but I'm excited to give them a whirl because those 24 hour sticks stay put, like do not budge at all. So I have high hopes for this one. And then I did get a brush set from Trish McAvoy. I wanted to talk about all the brushes that I got at once, but I guess it doesn't really matter. But <laughs> this is the brush set that I picked up from Trish McAvoy. I really like um, Trish McAvoy brushes. They're really, really nice. And I think they're really well made. And a lot of them are um, natural hairs. And then she does have some synthetic hairs also. Um, but they're really wonderful. And some of these brushes are exclusive to this kit. And then some of them are... A part of her regular line and I actually threw out the card I apologize throughout the card um, that says it but I will link to this product along with everything else I'm talking about down below in my description box so you can get a sense of what is part of her regular line and what is exclusive to this brush kit so this is what the outer packaging looks like this is like it's like printed pleather and I like that red zipper detail and then here are the brushes on the inside so there's six brushes included and these three are the natural hair. These are undyed goat hair. So this one is the 91 Blender. I think this one is exclusive to the set. I'm not sure. Um, this one is 70 Bronzer Blush. Again, I think this one is exclusive to this set also. And then number 30 Eye Blending Brush is also included. I think this is part of their regular line. Uh, I'm not sure, but this one is also um, undyed goat hair. And then we have number 97 Depth and Dimension. This is like a really dense like buffing brush. These are synthetic hairs. Then we have number 99, the Tight Eye Lining Brush. I think this could be part of her regular line also. And then we have the Soft Eye Lining and Brow Brush. And these are synthetic hairs. So I have to admit, I really got this because I love the case. I just think it's really cute. And I do like Trish McAvoy brushes, so I took the opportunity to pick this up. But I have not gotten a chance to use them yet. But I'm pretty sure I would take these on a trip with me. So I think I have a couple trips coming up. So I will let you know how these work out. So I did do a little damage at Sephora. Uh, one of my subs, thank you very much, uh, I'm sorry, I don't remember who it was, but they commented when I talked about the lip colors bleeding in my Killian and Bond Number no. 9 uh, lipstick video, um, they kindly mentioned this product. It's from Urban Decay, it's called the Ultimate Ozone Multipurpose Primer Pencil. And it says it's clinically proven to make your lip color last eight hours, it's to hold lip color in place, and it's to prevent feathering. Um, it also corrects mistakes. It's well, what it says, it's a multi-purpose primer pencil. So I was just really intrigued, so I decided to pick it up. It's basically like a chubby pencil. It's just basically like a clear stick. It feels very, very slick. It feels very silicone-y. Yeah, you're not even gonna see anything. So I'm just, and it's very soft. You can see I've already kind of like dented the tip there. I'm just really, really curious about this product. So I'm excited to give that a shot. And then while I was on the Sephora site, 
um, looking up this product, I noticed that RMS Beauty came out with new luminizing powders. And RMS Beauty is one of those brands that I've been wanting to kind of um, get more into and I just purchased one of their compacts that has like four of their cream highlighter products in there Purchased that I think when I was in New York. Yeah, I purchased that in January So I really enjoyed those products But these are powder products and she's really known for her cream products in the little pots which you guys know I'm a sucker for but she has so many products in the pots. It's very uh, like overwhelming for me So when I saw these on the Sephora site in the new section, I was like, let me give these a shot So I got two of them one in Grand Dame and then one in Madeira bronzer So the Grand Dame is um, Definitely ooh, look at this packaging It's like loose light packaging. It reminds me of that Rodin mermaid highlighter that I have This is the Grand Dame. So there's a mirror up here, which is really cool. These are weighty too um, but here's the highlighter. Looks like a nice, ooh, looks like a nice tone for me. Oh, that's pretty. Subtle, nothing too crazy. I wouldn't expect anything too crazy from this makeup line. It's very kind of natural and soft. Um, so that's Grand Dame. And then here is the Madeira bronzer. So this I think is meant to be a highlighter for deeper skin tones, but I decided to pick it up to see if it would work as a bronzer. And I think it may, I don't mind a shimmery bronzer. So I'm excited to give that a shot, but it does look like I'm gonna have to be careful with it. But that has, wow, that has such a beautiful sheen. I hope that's coming across on camera, but it almost has like a rose gold peachy undertone. Ooh, that is so pretty. That may end up just being like a bronzer topper for me. And then I also picked this up. Uh, this is something I saw in the new arrival section also. And this is a new uh, fragrance from uh, Maison Margiela. And it's one of the replica scents. And it's called Under the Lemon Trees, which of course really, really intrigued me because I love citrus scents. And it is a really beautiful citrusy scent, but it's very unisex, which is nice. It's not too sweet. It's just citrusy with like a little hint of like musk underneath and it's it's just beautiful so I picked up a little one because I wasn't sure if I was gonna love it but I really really like it so I think once I'm out of this or if I just fall in love with it I'll get like a big bottle and travel with this one or something but if you're into citrusy scents and you like unisex scents not necessarily too sweet not necessarily too heavy um, I think you'll really like this under the lemon trees so I also picked up the Pat McGrath Finish Eyes Mascara. It took so long to get to me. It took more than a week and a half to actually get to me. I don't know why. And then they started using packaging inside the boxes that is like little black plastic slivers. So it's like the plastic version of like those paper worms. It is such a nightmare. I am never ever, ever ordering from her site ever again. And I love Pat McGrath and I was ordering from her site because I wanted to support her directly. They also didn't charge sales tax, which was very helpful, but I'm like, never again. It's awful. It got everywhere. My dog ended up eating some. I was finding those little black pieces for days. They just, because they're plastic, they kind of like stick to things. They kind of like float and then just like magnetize to like every random piece of anything in your house. And they're just absolutely awful and I can't imagine they're biodegradable either so it's just terrible so I got this I dug this out of the black plastic nightmare and I just haven't even bothered opening it because I've been so annoyed so let's open this together there's more bullshit inside this bag I'm gonna be pissed okay now it's just the mascara I was like if there's more plastic worms or I don't know or glitter in here I'm gonna be really really upset here is the mascara and I've been uh, playing with the new Sicily So Intense mascara. So, so volume, so volume, I think is the newest mascara. And I've been enjoying that, but I don't, I'm someone that doesn't get really excited about mascara, but I just really wanted to try this again because I love Pat McGrath and I don't think I'll be doing a wear test or a full review on this mascara, but I will let you know how this works out for me. All right, so let's get into the makeup brushes that I purchased. So I purchased all the new Sonia G makeup brushes that came out. So about a month ago at this point, she released the Worker 3 and the Crease 2. I love the Crease 2. The Crease 2 is just a wonderful, 
blending brush. It's just an all around amazing blending brush. It's undyed goat hair, so you can use this with liquid and creams if you want. I've only been using it with powders, but this has taken the place of my Tom Ford number 13 brush. So the hair length is the same, and it's just a little bit more narrow than the Tom Ford and that's totally fine. I'm so happy she came out with this brush. I absolutely love it. It's just fantastic. So I've been using this nonstop. And then the Worker 3 brush, let me find a Worker 2 just to compare it. Okay, so here's the Worker 3 brush, and here's the Worker 2. So it's just like this like kind of shrunken down version of Worker 2. The hair length is a little bit shorter. It's not quite as thick you know, when you turn them to the side. So it's just nice if you felt like the Worker 1 and 2 brushes were just a little bit too big for what you wanted to do. If you wanted just a little bit more detail or just not cover as much surface area, this is wonderful. This has been great. I actually just washed it because I've been using it very, very consistently. So that's the Worker 3 and again, undyed goat hair. So you can use this with uh, cream and liquid products. And then Sonia G restocked on a bunch of brushes. So I went ahead and just got another face one brush. This is the brush that I talk non-stop about when I talk about finishing powders. So here is a brand new face one. Here's the one that I've been using. So no changes made there. This one just looks a little bit more splayed out because I've been using it. But I just love this brush for finishing powder and I needed to get it back up. This had been out of stock for a very long time. So I just jumped on the opportunity to pick it up. So I'm really glad I have a backup of this now. And then she came out with two new brushes very recently. This one is the Builder 3. And this is just, oh, it's just gonna be like the most perfect flat shader brush. Here is Builder 1. So the Builder brushes are great for those really finicky kind of shadows. Maybe they uh, work better with a finger. And her Builder brushes are really meant to like mimic a finger. The, the Builder 2 is just like a bigger version of Builder 1. And this to me is like the perfect kind of mimic for my first finger. So this Builder 3 brush I think is a little bit more like traditionally shaped than these two brushes. These two brushes are very unique. I've never seen brushes like this before, uh, but this one kind of looks like a very typical flat shader brush, but it's really densely packed. The hairs in here are really, they're soft, you know, they're they are very, very soft, but they are it's like a stiff brush. So this is gonna pick up a lot of product and it's gonna be a really kind of like targeted placement on your lid, much the same way these are, but this is I think gonna be a little bit more versatile because of this more traditional shape. You're gonna be able to use it just as a regular kind of shader brush. So. I haven't used this yet, I'm really excited to, and this is dyed um, goat hair. So that is the Builder 3, and then she came back out with the Sculpt 2, but she changed it up a little bit. So this is like the Sculpt 2 version 2. So I have the original Sculpt 2 here. So here is the original Sculpt 2. So it looks like a little fan brush. And then here is Sculpt 2 V2. So the hairs are longer, you can see, um, but the thickness is the same. So this is just gonna be a little bit fluffier and gonna have a little bit of a lighter application than this brush. Now, I haven't tried this one. As you saw, I just took off the uh, wrapping, but I really like this one for the density of the bristles. This one is gonna be a little bit lighter. It's gonna be a little bit fluffier. So I don't know, I'm glad that I have an original sculpt too because I really like this for really beaming highlight. This is great. But I'm I'm definitely excited to give this a shot. If you guys want like a full video on this brush and kind of comparing it to the other fan brushes in Sonia's line, let me know, I can do that because I personally am very curious about how this one is going to perform. And then I purchased uh, three brushes from Hakuhoto. I don't really know what got into me, but I was just on their site, you know, hanging out as I do. And they had a bunch of Canadian squirrel hair brushes. And I really love Canadian squirrel hair brushes. They're a little bit different from like blue or gray squirrel hair. I'm not the biggest like hair connoisseur, but these hairs to me, um, act a little bit more like sable hair brushes, which I love. So this um, deluxe blender brush from Trish McAvoy, this is sable hair. Isom has a bunch of eyeshadow brushes that are sable hair. They are, um, th they're like a thicker hair, but they're very soft and they're just really 
sturdy and they pick up a lot of product. And there's something about the way it lays down product. It just lays it down like really evenly. Like to me, synthetic brushes, you're gonna like just plop the product down and then blend it out with the brush. It doesn't really grip or hold onto it. it doesn't have cuticles in the hair the way natural hairs do. And then their natural hairs are a little bit more grippy, so it lays down product differently. There's natural hairs that are really silky smooth. Again, it lays down the product differently. But with the Canadian squirrel hairs, I find that it just lays down the product like, I don't know, like it makes everything look like it's like painted on. I don't know, they're just really, really awesome. And I only have a few that I purchased from Koyudo off of the CD Japan site. And because there's like a very short window when they can comb this hair off of the squirrels, they're not always in production and they're hard brushes to get. So um, I picked up three, like I said, Canadian squirrel hairs from Hakuhodo. So here is one of their vermilion handled brushes and this is S127, so this is like a flat shader brush. And then I got this really super, super cute. I didn't even realize how cute this brush was gonna be um, until it arrived, but this is the Kokuten portable eyeshadow. So look at how little this is, but this is that Kokuten wood handle that they have a whole line of, and it's really beautiful. It's this beautiful wood. And this is similar to the S127, but it's smaller. This is actually probably closer to the Builder 3 in size, yeah. The hairs are a little bit longer and it's a little bit flatter, but I thought this would be great to travel with. But isn't that just so cute? Here's the difference in handle length. <laughs> and then this one is, I think, the one I'm most excited for. This is the Hakuhodo G5527. And this is, again, Canadian squirrel hair, but it has like a rounded ferrule and it's domed. So I just thought this would be great for buffing out shadow or like putting down a nice concentrated amount of shadow or like buffing this out. I just thought this would be a really handy brush to have. I actually need to look up if these are um, liquid product friendly. I believe they are. I know sable hair is. Squirrel hair generally isn't because it's so fine, but this is definitely like a sturdier version of squirrel hair, but so soft. So I'm definitely going to have to look that up. I will let you know, but I'm really excited for these brushes. And then last but not least, it was so it was so weird because I was on the Hakuhodo site. I placed an order for those three brushes and I was like, Yee, I'm so excited to get them. And then I saw Sonia G post on Instagram, the new Beautylish and Chikahodo collaboration for a Lunar New Year brush. And I was like, what? Now I have to get this brush. I'm like, wow, I didn't really mean to buy so many brushes all at once, but here we go. So I purchased the Beautylish Chikahodo Lunar New Year brush. I couldn't resist could not resist. Look at the cute little piggies on there. Stop it. Look how cute they are. And then of course this is like a beautiful brush. So all of this is like matte black and then this is squirrel hair. So soft and it's just gonna be a great powder brush. It's like oval shaped. It's not completely round uh, but let's hold it up to some comparable brushes. Here is the Chikahodo Z1 brush. So it's like kind of the same shape, except that this is round and this is oval. And I think a lot of people were talking about um, how this compared to like the MK line from Chikahodo. I don't have any of those brushes, so I don't know, but I do also have another Z brush. This is a cheek brush. I can never remember this number. I think it's Z4, but you'll see how much smaller it is. So those are all the things that I purchased. So let's go ahead and get into the PR stuff or the things that were uh, sent to me that I did not purchase myself. If you are uninterested in these things, totally fine, just click away. Uh, but we're gonna get into the PR stuff right now. All right, so the first few things I'm gonna talk about, I got through Octoly. And one thing is from Skin Iceland and it's actually a set. So they sent over these Hydro Cool Firming Eye Gels. As you can see, I have already busted into these and how many come in here? Eight, I have five left. So I've used these three times already. I, I love eye gels. I suffer from puffiness. So what I do is I'll keep these in the fridge and in the morning, you know, when I go make my coffee or whatever, I'll just slap these right on and 
and my puffiness is definitely down and it just helps like right away kind of just like wake me up a little bit between the feeling and kind of it being able to like help like my eyes like open up basically in the morning these have been awesome so i've been loving these and i'm definitely going to be purchasing these once i run out they also sent me their um icelandic relief eye cream it has glacial flower extract it's this little guy here and it's very thick. So here it is. I think you can probably tell how thick it is, but it's a very dense eye cream, but it's, it's so interesting. It's almost like this jelly texture. So when it goes on, it feels really cooling and it doesn't feel heavy at all. It's just, it's really neat. I wish you could feel this texture, but it's so, it's very interesting. So the third thing that Skin Iceland sent me kind of as part of this little kit uh, was a lip product. And I don't have it to show you, which I'll tell you why in just a second, but I will pop a picture of it up on the screen. So the one that I got was berry flavored and it comes in like this squeezy tube and it has this like silicone tip and it was really nice and easy to like apply it. It felt really nice, except that it was, um, I don't know what the ingredient was in there, but it was like very minty feeling and I don't personally like that on my lips. So that's not a product I would be repurchasing myself. Um, but if you don't mind that, it did actually moisturize my lips really nicely. The reason why I don't have it is because I put it right back in the box and I put it down, but Miss Fuzzy Butters got her uh, little teeth on it and she basically chomped through the box and then chomped through the lip product. So there was like, it was, oozing and, and gooey it was kind of gross and i should have kept it to show you guys but i just threw it away i cleaned her mouth off and i just threw it away immediately so anyway so that is the lip product and um, then through octoly eve loam sent me this moisture cream this is a product that has not been released yet it will be available i believe april 1st and it is a very rich face cream now, a lot of the Eve Loan products have like, I think eucalyptus, there's something that's like mentholated in their products. And sometimes it feels nice, like in the summertime, if I feel like I want a cooling effect, I don't mind that feeling, but on a general kind of everyday basis, I don't want that on my skin. I don't like that kind of minty, mentholated feeling on my skin. So I was very curious about this because this is supposed to be for dry skin. And I thought, I wonder if it's gonna have that mintiness to it. And it doesn't. I wanna say there's maybe just a hint of it like a little bit where it actually just feels very refreshing on your skin. So I have a lot of face cream. So I've used this maybe twice since I got it. I use it during the day. It's not heavy enough for my incredibly dry skin for like a night cream. But during the day, I put it on both of my cheeks because again, I wasn't sure if I was gonna have a reaction to the any of the ingredients in here. And it was fine. I didn't have any reaction or whatever. And it just had a really nice, refreshing feeling versus it kind of feeling like it was too minty um, or that I couldn't put it close to my eyes. It's not like that at all. So I was really happy about that. And I'm gonna try and fit this into like my day uh, skincare routine where I kind of put this into the rotation. So that is the Eve Loam Moisture Cream coming out April 1st. Keep an eye out. If you like her products, I think you'll really like this. And then the third thing Octoly sent me, this is uh, from Clarins. And this I just got in the mail, like literally right before I sat down to film. This is their double serum. It's a hydric plus lipidic system treatment. Um, it's a complete age control concentrate. I didn't know much about this product when I went through Octoly and picked this up, but it's a double serum. There's an ingredient in here that's water soluble and then one that's oil soluble. So I thought that was really interesting and it's supposed to firm and visibly reduce the look of fine lines. It's supposed to improve radiance and even skin tone which I need, and it reduces the appearance of pores. And then it says product plus, which was really intriguing when I just opened this up, made to measure application. So dispense an amount customized to your skin type or climate. Turn the dial to select the correct dosage for your skin's needs and press the pump. Oh, interesting. So this is, so I don't know if you can see that. So this is like a little dial and that's a small droplet that's a big one. So if you want less, you put it on the small one, and if you want more, you put it on the big drop. So that is very cool, but look at this packaging. Very, very neat. I'm very excited to give this a shot. Clarins is another brand that I was really loving 
maybe like when I was right outside of college, so around like 95, 96, 1995, 96, I think there was a news story that came out that Madonna was using the Clarins body oils to um, avoid getting uh, stretch marks when she was pregnant with Lourdes, who was now like an adult with a business. Um, but she was using that and it was huge. And I remember people were kind of going nuts about it. So I remember like discovering Clarins then and, you know, kind of getting a whole bunch of their stuff and really enjoying it. But then, I don't know, I just kind of stopped using it. My eczema was really bad. So I kind of went to other things, but I'm kind of excited to like rediscover Clarins because they've been around a long time and I feel like they know what they're doing. So I'm excited to give that a shot and I will definitely report back to you guys. So this was a really, really nice surprise. So I'm a Glossier rep, um, as you guys know, or if you didn't know, I'm a Glossier rep. So if you use my Glossier link, I get a small commission off of those sales, but they've never ever sent me anything, any of their products before until just a couple days ago. So they just came out with a brand new cleanser and they have a milky jelly cleanser and they actually sent me like a little travel size of that which is already in my bathroom but they came out with the milky oil which is a waterproof makeup remover and you can see I've already used it so I first of all I love this packaging this is awesome because you can just squirt the product out onto a cotton swab to use instead of all the other kind of waterproof makeup removers that I've used where you have to like kind of squeeze it and it has that just that little opening that you guys know what I'm talking about. This is so much better because you can actually like squirt it out really quickly. You don't have to like mess around with it and it doesn't drip everywhere. So I just started using Chanel's waterproof La Volume de Chanel mascara. And so I started using this. This is awesome. So it takes off the mascara. It's one of those products that you have to, it separates, so you have to shake up. It's like one of biphasal, I think it's called. So it says shake well, squeeze onto facial cotton or cotton swab, press against eye, blah, 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 and then gently wipe away makeup. So half of it is an oil and then half of it is a micellar water. It's incredibly effective, incredibly, incredibly effective, but what I love about this is that it does not leave my eyes cloudy at all. Like I love the Lancome one. That one is a very effective eye makeup remover as well. The biphasal one, the one that comes in the blue bottle. But every time I use that, I end up with cloudy vision. I don't get that with this. So I'm really excited. And they also sent some of the cotton rounds over to me. So, so I have been loving this milky oil. Definitely, definitely will be repurchasing this on my own. It's just great. It's really fantastic. So Happy to have that. So Muse Beauty Pro sent me some of their Eastam brushes. These came out like mid-February. So these have been out for a while. Um, and this is the G34 brush. Yeah, the G34 brush and the X52 brush. Both of them are dyed goat hair and they're great. This one I have not been using quite as much as this one, merely because I have a lot of other <laughs> cheek brushes hanging around but I'm always on the hunt for like the perfect eye blending brush. So I've been playing around with this G34 a lot and it is great. I just mentioned this in my favorites actually, and it's wonderful for that last step of blending. It's just amazing. It's just, it makes really, really quick work of blending. These are goat hairs. So they're soft, but they're a little bit coarser than say like the Sonia G brushes. So I think because of their coarseness, they actually do like a faster job at blending. So I've been loving this G34 brush and this is lovely. This is also a lovely brush. I just haven't been using it quite as much as this one. Both really great, both available on Muse Beauty Pro. This one is $49 and this one is $36. All right, we are almost done. I've been talking for so long that my throat hurts and I'm like sweating. So let me just wrap this up. A friend of mine, a subscriber who I now definitely refer to as a friend, we chat all the time. Um, he sent me over some Chanel stuff, which is so, so sweet. So he sent over the Ru La Rouge Duo Ultra Tenu. <laughs> it's their Ultra Wear Liquid Lip Color in number 47 Daring Red. This is a lip formula from Chanel that I've never tried, but I've heard the best things about. So I was really excited when I opened up his package and found this in there. So this is, I think, like their their version of liquid lipstick. So this is like a long wearing, uh, kind of like matte finished lipstick, but the other end has like a topper which will make it a little bit more comfortable, I hear, but it won't affect the longevity. So I'm like really, really intrigued by this product. Definitely gonna give this a shot and report back. I'm sure most of you out there have already tried this, but 
I haven't, and I'm really excited. Um, he also sent over a gentle bi-phase eye makeup remover, and I'm excited to give this a shot as well, but I'm curious to see if this is gonna give me that cloudy vision or what the deal is. So really excited to try that eye makeup remover. And then um, he knows how much I love the Deauville Chanel uh, fragrance, so he sent over the body gel and then the body lotion. Isn't that amazing? Okay, and then check this out. So look at how these tops open up. So when you turn it, the CCs like slide down and then you have the little opening there. Isn't that so cool? That is like the coolest top I have ever seen. So super cool. So Daniel, thank you so, so much for sending over all of these wonderful Chanel products. I love them. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. So that is it for this haul video. <clears throat> I need to go get some water before I lose my voice. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know if you want like detailed videos on any of the things that I mentioned. That is pretty much why I do haul videos, just to show you what I have. And if you want more detailed information on something, let me know down below in the comments section. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video. Mm -hmm.